Sonic the Hedgehog, one of Sega's most iconic characters, played a significant role in the success of the Sega Genesis console during the early 1990s. However, the transition of the Sega Saturn in the mid-90s presented several challenges for Sonic's presence on the platform. Many young gamers like myself switched our loyalties from Nintendo to Sega because of the Little Blue Hedgehog, so when we found out about Sega's new 32-bit console, we expected the flagship IP to get a 32-bit upgrade and a new game. What we got wasn't what we were expecting. On this video, I'll be discussing the absence of a new Sonic game on the Sega Saturn. What did Sega do wrong? Why did it happen? And more importantly, how did us gamers respond? Like many of my videos, I'll be looking back through the goggles of nostalgia. And not getting a real Sonic game on the Saturn still bothers me to this day. But on that note, let's get into why there was no Sonic game on the Sega Saturn. Introducing Sega Saturn. Aww, it the Sega Saturn was released in November of 1994 in Japan, aiming to compete with Sony's PlayStation and the upcoming Nintendo 64. Sega wanted to make a strong impact with the Saturn's launch, and one of their strategies was to create a flagship Sonic game for a new console. The Sonic game would be called Sonic Extreme, and it was going to be the new 32-bit home for Sega's mascot. As development began, Sega faced multiple obstacles. The biggest difficulty was technical difficulties. Sonic Extreme was intended to be a 3D Sonic game, which was a new and ambitious direction for the series. However, developing a 3D platformer during the mid-90s was a complex task, especially given the limitations of the Sega Saturn's hardware. The development team struggled with creating a functional and visually appealing 3D game engine for the Saturn. One way the Sonic team used to get around these challenges was to utilize a bird's eye style camera to the game. These types of changes led to the constant restarts of the project. The project faced several restarts and shifts in development. Different game engines were explored and multiple prototypes were created, causing a lack of consistent progress. These restarts and changes in direction led to a disjointed development process. The development process became convoluted with too many hands in the cookie jar and started to feel like a Frankenstein Sonic. This led to internal conflicts and management issues. There were reported disagreements and conflicts within the development team regarding the game's direction, design, and technical aspects. These internal conflicts likely contributed to the game's development being less focused and efficient. It's even reported that the first time Nakayama saw the first version of the game, he stormed out of the office. Between the technical difficulties and constant restarts of the project, this led to major time constraints and rushed development. The release of the Sega Saturn was moved up unexpectedly, catching many developers off guard and leaving them with limited time to adapt to the new platform. This rushed timeline put pressure on the Sonic Extreme team to deliver a game in a short amount of time, leading to compromises in quality and design. This lack of quality is pretty evident when you see the early dev build compared to other 3D games on the Sega Saturn such as Nights Into Dreams. I mean, come on, even Sonic R looks better. Can you see the Throughout the development of Sonic Extreme, Sega was constantly playing catch-up to the competition. The Sonic Extreme development period coincided with the rise of the Sony PlayStation and other 3D-capable consoles. The pressure to create a compelling 3D Sonic game that could compete with other popular 3D platformers of the time added to the challenges faced by the development team. 
After all, by 1997, Mario 64 on the N64 had been out for two years, and was considered the premier 3D platformer of the generation. It was clear at this point that the hardware in the Sega Saturn was not capable of cranking out a Sonic platformer on par with the competition. As the project continued to get pushed back and the Saturn library began to form a life of its own without the blue mascot, Sega began to transition their priorities to the next-gen console. All these factors combined to create a perfect storm of difficulties for the development of Sonic Extreme. The game's troubled development ultimately led Sega to make the difficult decision to cancel it. With the cancellation of Sonic Extreme, Sega struggled to deliver a flagship Sonic game for the Sega Saturn. Sonic Jam, a compilation title featuring previous Sonic games, was released for the Saturn in 1997. While it provided some Sonic content, it wasn't a new mainline Sonic game designed specifically for the Sega Saturn. Sonic 3D Blast was eventually touted as the 3D premier Sonic title on the platform, and was really an insult to many Sega fans like myself. The promise of a fully 3D 32-bit Sonic had been reduced to a cleaned up port from the Sega Genesis. While Sonic Extreme never saw an official release, its legacy lives on in the form of prototypes, concept art, and the lasting impact it had on the Sonic franchise and the gaming industry's approach to 3D platformers. After the massive failure and cancellation of Sonic Extreme, Sega focused their attention to make right with fans by going all in on a Sonic game for their next gen console, the Dreamcast. What we got was one of the most notable games in the Sonic franchise to this date. As much as we look back and think what could have been with the Sonic on the Sega Saturn, I firmly believe that without the troubles and mishaps, we wouldn't have gotten a game that has inspired many Sonic games since then, and has seen multiple releases on various digital storefronts in the last 23 years. Well guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have anything to add or feel there is something I missed, let me know in the comments section below. If this is your first time here, I hope you can subscribe and stick around for a while. Until next time, do you even Sonic Extreme Bro? I'm the Retro Bro, and I'll see you on the next video.